He touched our hearts with his faith story, and he has an amazing ministry called God Touch Milwaukee. So grateful to our incomparable producer, Brent Young, for making the connection. He's so great, as Homer said, we have to have him back a second time to get us updated, especially in these difficult times, doing so much for the city. His name is Marty Calderon. This is My Faith with Homer and Pip. I'm Tommy Pippins. A man who touches my heart always is Steve the Homer True, and he's going to lead us off. It's simple because uh, I refer to people like Marty as their middle name should be Red Cross because they save lives just like Red Cross does. And I know it hasn't changed since we last talked, Marty, but it's been a different world with the virus. And I look at you and I know your life is a story and you have stories. Talk about recent in terms of my faith, which we know the life story, what you've given us. Well, I thank the both of you guys and Brent uh, for inviting me back on um, and just the you know, incredible relationship that I, I've built with you guys is I thank you guys so much. And you guys are a true blessing to to me and to the ministry that we're doing here in Milwaukee. Um, and, and I do thank you guys for, for having me again. Um, you know, since the last time that we talked, it's a lot has gone on. You know, we uh, actually uh, did purchase the building, a church building, and we were, were able to get more men in, into our program to be able to work with them. And we're able to then also... Uh, move uh, one of the, our houses that we had, we had a duplex, we were able to open up the downstairs, which was our administration office, now into a living quarters to where we could get, you know, three more guys to live there. So a lot of positive has happened um, and are still happening. Uh, we partnered up with different organizations such as Feeding America, and we've been feeding the neighborhood uh, with Prairie uh, Farms, They've been, they were donating gallons of 144 boxes of dairy products that we're able to give to the neighborhood and uh, to the, uh, actually I just partnered up with the USAD, uh, USDA and uh, another organization that we're getting 935 boxes of food and milk to be able to distribute into the community uh, and really be a blessing to to people in our area so since even with the pandemic it's been incredible because you know, a lot of places are taking big hits, and, and I don't say this to brag or anything like that, but God has really had his hand in our ministry because we've had we've been having an abundance to where we're able to not only take care of the men at the homes, but also take care of our neighborhoods and the surrounding areas uh, of where we are located at. So it's been an incredible journey since all this has happened, but it's an incredible journey to see how God's hand is moving and uh, using us to be able to be a blessing and a beacon to the people in this, this community. How do they, when you work with them, how do they speak of their faith? How do you see it touch them? It's been you for, I don't know how many years, 30 years, you can tell me the years, but you see others from the very beginning. What happens? You know, it's something because you see them come into an environment that is a safe environment to where they were living a careless life and they were in very dangerous environments themselves. And uh, then to, to come into our environment, uh, there's a peace, they say, and there's an understanding of a love, a genuine love, not of, you know, uh, being taken advantage or, or, um, being uh, being being used in ways to where it would benefit others and uh, here they say that they don't feel that they feel like they're here they're getting an understanding of the true love of the Lord and that it's not about you know what is that ministry or what is that organization going to gain it's about what is that organization or ministry able to gain to help them on this journey of recovery in this journey with their relationship with Jesus Christ. So, you know, I, it's incredible because I've seen guys come in just uh, broken down to where they walked out of our, our organization just with uh, uh, families reconciled, you know, 
uh, like being able to have a license, being able to have a full-time job, being able to, you know, reconcile with uh, brothers and sisters, uh, and being able to just to be productive in, in a community that they used to terrorize. And now they want to be a, a helpful hand to, to the people within the community. Other groups provide things like that, but don't focus or start with God's part of it. Why is that such a big deal, not just for one's own faith, but just in observing people changing their lives? I've said this, even if you're an atheist, you just cannot dispute the change that occurs in organizations in which faith is a part of all that they do. You know, I'm glad you asked me that because, you know, in my best answer, and I have the answer, <laughs> and, and that's just it. I have the answer. It's when you put Jesus Christ first, everything that you do will be a benefit to help others, okay? Because you're already being helped by putting Jesus first, and he's able to to help bring healing, okay? Then it doesn't turn into about you anymore. It turns into what can I do to help the next person? You see what I'm saying? And when you leave Jesus out of that equation, it, it's not going to work. You know, we've seen other organizations, we've seen other places where they do great work. They really do, you know? But if, if Jesus is not part of it, a true transformation of a heart will not happen. You know, I can speak on that for myself. I've been to other programs. I've been to other organizations to get help. But it wasn't until I truly put Jesus first is when the healing process did start for me. And then I was able to be, you know, a help, not only to the organization, but a help to other people because I just wanted to do more for the Lord. And, and with the Lord, it, it's about helping other people. And then I wish you'd have others because I know they don't buy it right away. You tell no. them, and, like they, and you know, when they're like, that, there's a, and then one day I know they go, oh my God, he's right. This is just what Marty told us. Tell us some of that. I, I, I had a guy come through my program and he insisted that, you know what, it's just high power. He's doing it on his own. And that, you know, he, he's able to, to handle this. And he stayed with me for like three months. And then he left. And, and then he uh, came back to me a mess. And then he, he told me, he goes, Marty, if I just would have listened to what you were telling me, none of this would have happened. You know? And, and it's not like, you know, I want to say I told you so, you know, because I don't want him to feel bad. But it's like, you know, I guess that others try to always – do things on their own because they don't like a few words that I'm going to say. They don't like structure and they don't like submission. Okay. Because they've been so used to doing things by themselves. Now when they're in a structured environment and they have to submit underneath the, uh, the um, procedures and underneath the, the request of the people who run the organization right away, they think, Oh, they just want to bully me. But when I got the understanding of submission and coming underneath someone who I know is going to help me, I tell you, that's when all the change started to happen. It was, and it was godly people that were the ones who were helping me. I mean, I said the same thing. I wish I would have listened to you, dad. I wish I would have listened to you because I wouldn't have gone through all this mess, but it was just because I was too selfish and I kept thinking about me. These people, many of them you told us about, live in this tough world. They're the toughest person, and they, yeah. they put their life on the line. every. And yet, you present them and tell us of people that are far more fragile, is that the right word, than anybody could imagine, given the way they act. Is yeah. That? Yeah. And, you know, I, I'll tell you, I had this uh, hardcore gang member. I mean, hardcore. I mean, this guy was in, in and out of jail, and I knew him when he was about 16, 17. And I used to always go into the neighborhood and look for him because I saw potential. I saw so much potential in him. And I'd always tell him, you know, 
I'm, I'm here if you need any help. And, but he was at that age and no, I could do this all on my own. And, you know, so fast forward, he's in his thirties. He was 31 and he called me and he said, I need help, you know, and I, I want to get help because of my lifestyle. Here's a guy that was getting shot at, um, was doing things he shouldn't have been doing himself. Um, a gentleman thinking, you know, living his lifestyle. Anyone thinking about anyone that would think that uh, this this gentleman, the lifestyle he'd lived, he should have never, you know, lived to his age now because of everything that he was doing. And so many other gangs didn't like him because of the things he was doing. Came to the program, and you know, and it's remarkable to see him now, in you know what's happening in his life. And there was people who would call him weak, people who would call him a sellout, people who would say he was, you know, a snitch or, or all those bad things that a gang member never wanted to hear. But he knew he needed to go through this program to get himself right. And I'll tell you what, he's doing phenomenal right now. I, ho I hope that answered the question that you were asking. It always does. How is it changed? You've been doing this so long. Are the people the same or are phones different? Or what's the reality of uh, how tough a life this is? Or do you see a consistency that always goes to a family life or what a life growing up? What's the same from when you started? And are things different because of the technology that exists today? Oh, yeah. I mean, we, yeah, technology has a huge part of a lot of situations that happen out there in the street. You know, and because it's easy access to get at get at people and to be able to cause problems and issues through that way. You know, um, I think also I, I wanted to hit on family. Um, we we got to understand too that um, when you're in a dysfunctional family and you're living, say you're 16 years old, your mom kicks you out. You your dad, you really don't know who your dad is. Then you go live with your grandma, who's 75, 80 years old. What's going to happen? You know, there's going to be no structure for the for the individual. You know, so family, technology, a lot of all, all that stuff plays a big part in individuals' lives until they're able to understand more about a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because technology too is great to have when you're. You know, it's easier to spread the word of the Lord technology. So I, I hope I'm answering the questions that you're asking. Uh, you do, because I don't have any answer <laughs> in particular. I'm not expecting anything. I, every time I see you, I always think you should be dead. I know that's not a nice thing to say, but <laughs> if I was one of the people that you deal with, and I want the world to be bad, because that's the way I survive the best, there's one guy who's made my life miserable, and it's you. And you know that, right? Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to follow with that. So, well, and it, it's, it doesn't scare you. No, none of, you know, I hope I can say this. I, I, there is a situation that happened the other day, okay? We, because um, we do street outreach, okay? So we were out there at night at probably about seven o'clock at night. We're handing out 100 big, big lunches and stuff. And, um, so we're in this area, and um, a gang member jumps out who I haven't seen in a long time. You're like, man, Marty, where you been? You know, he comes up to me, hugs me. We talk, and, you know, he's, he's intoxicated. He's been drinking. So he goes into the corner store, and then the rest of the team is on the side of the building talking and praying with people, okay? So I'm on the other side. And so he comes out, and then there's another guy there, and they get into an argument, all right? So all of a sudden, guns got drawn, all right? So I'm sitting right there, like, okay, what am I going to do, <laughs> you know? And so they're holding these guns at each other. And I'm like, hey, you know, you guys, there's cameras. You can't, you know, you're gonna, you guys are going to get in trouble. And you got, you, you really, you know, and I'm trying to talk, talk these guys down because they're angry at each other, They, you know? And then the owner of the store came out and saw what was happening. He has this little button he pushed and it sounds like a siren so I'm talking to the guys calming them down and he puts the siren on and they all decide to to, to go and uh, you know get, get away from the area because they thought the cops would come 
So everyone leaves. No one in my team saw what happened, okay? And I'm glad they didn't because I didn't – otherwise I think they would have, you know, you know, got scared and, you know, who knows what would happen. So I said, you know what, it's time to go. Let's go back to the church. So we get back to the church, and then I explained to them the situation. And the, the one lady's like, were you scared? I said – and, and this is honest God, God truth to you guys, you know, I wasn't afraid, you know, I, I really wasn't because I really felt God's hand was on me at that time. And that if we weren't there at that particular time, if I wasn't there at that particular time, I think there would have been another murder in Milwaukee, you know, but God placed us in a situation to where, you know, I, I, had to be there, I guess, and because I knew the guy, and I was able to calm down, and and uh, you know, and, and and no one was hurt, you know. But Homer, I, to be honest with you, there was no fear within me, and I don't say that, you know, wanting to sound like a tough guy, you know, I say it in saying how much I trust the Lord when He sends me on missions, you know, and, and so it's just, I get put in different predicaments to where I know God is going to take care of me because he's taking care of me in the past in situations. Uh, Tommy, it's all yours. It's been an honor to talk to Marty R.C. Calderon, Red Cross, R.C. for short. So uh, you can take it from here. It's all yours. Yeah, well, how do you top that? I mean, where do you go from there, Homer? Just, just absolutely amazing. What a testimony. Marty, uh, one of the great saints in the Catholic Church uh, had a quote, not all change is growth. All growth requires change. Mm -hmm. Could you speak to that as you see Jesus Christ working in the people you work with and bless when the situation seems to be hopeless and then somehow they come to that surrender and trust? If you'll speak to that and then how it makes your heart feel. You know, it, it's something because, you know, a lot of the guys who I, I deal with, they have they have no trust, you know, with people. And because think about it, there's some of them are gang members, some of them are drug addicts, alcoholics, and they feel people are always trying to take advantage of them. And so when they come to to our program, they meet with us, and they sense that that they, that trust that they, that we're building with them you know, and the message of hope that we do send that, you know what, all this is, these are the things that you got to do in order for, for change and in order for you to really start seeing God move in your life. And that's getting in your word, that's spending time with God, that's, you know, doing things outside the box, you know. And so like we had a situation to where one guy, his, um, his ex-girlfriend they have a son and she called him and said I can't handle him no more and I'm dropping him off by you and he's in my program <laughs> you know and he really doesn't have a lot of family so he comes to me and he says I don't know what I'm going to do he goes I I, I don't want to leave because if I leave I know I'm going to go back doing the things that that I shouldn't be doing and I said you know what we just got to trust in the Lord because he tells us that if we trust in him with all things, he's going to take good care of us, you know? And so he's like, he goes, all right, Marty, you know? And so we prayed and we was like, Lord, just, we need, we need you to move in a mighty way with this because that little boy wasn't going to be able to stay with us either, you know? And so out of nowhere, his sister from Sheboygan calls and says, Hey, I got a job and I got to move back. I got to move to Milwaukee. And then he's like, is there any way if we help you find a place to live that you'll take my son until I finish the program with Marty? And she says, yeah, that's not a problem. And it so happened. I knew a landlord. So I called the landlord and say, Hey, do you have any open places? Cause I have a, a, a young lady coming to move from, um, from um, to move into, she wants to move back to Milwaukee. And he's like, well, if you're the one who's vouching for her, we'll take her. So God ordained that whole situation right there. And he was like, Marty, he goes, I see what you're saying now about trusting and that there is hope. And what you're telling us what's in this Bible, 
So, you know, just stories like that, it letting people know, once you start reading this word of God, because this word of God is so real that it's going to help you and it's going to change your life, that, you know, you're going to start seeing it manifest in front of you. It's going to, it's going to increase your faith. And then you're going to really trust in hard times when, when all the world's falling apart, but you know, God's going to be able to get you through it. Like he did right here. Cause he, he told me, I can't leave. He goes, I don't want to put him in foster care. And, and God just totally handled this situation. Marty, you're a beautiful soul. I, I can't wait for part three when it happens down the line. Uh, I would just close by there's a great event you have coming up. If people want to know a little bit more about it, it involves a Packers legend and future Hall of Famer, we hope, in Canton, Ohio. So take the floor and, and make a pitch for your great program. Homer and yours truly are obviously very blessed and honored to, to be able to uh, be there that night. Yes. So we're November 17th. Um, we're having our annual fundraiser. This is our fourth fundraiser. Um, and uh, last year we had an incredible speaker, uh, Stuart Briscoe. And it was an incredible time with Stuart Briscoe. And this year we have the honor of uh, having Leroy Butler come and, uh, and speak and, and give his testimony. And, and it's going to be November 17th. Uh, you can go to our website, www.godtouchmilwaukee.org. It's going to be, the location is going to be in Wales, and it's at a place called Fate, F-E-T-E. -E. And, um, you know, we, we're selling uh, tickets. Of course, you got to go online for everything. And then uh, uh, you can purchase a table. If you want to come by yourself, we have, uh, you purchase a, a seat. And uh, uh, we're just looking for an incredible time. And uh, we're going to basically break down what we do here at God Touch Milwaukee for the ones who come that don't know nothing, anything about us. And we're going to have a testimonial from some of the guys who live here and they're going to talk about what God is doing in their life. And then we're going to talk, talk about the growth of the ministry from when we started four years ago to where we are now and to what we're uh, looking to do in the future. So it's going to be an incredible night. Then we have, you know, the great Pop Pippins and uh, the great Steve the Homer True. We're going to be with us that night and uh, help us out uh, through the evening. And it, it's just going to be an enjoyable time and great time of fellowship, great time of getting to know, know people who you never met. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, every, every time these fundraisers, we started off doing these fundraisers at uh, Botana's restaurant uh, here in Milwaukee. And, um, and then we started just to grow and, and, and grow and, and we're just seeing what God's doing here. And, and you know, the one thing, I get excited about it is because, you know, when we first started God Touch Milwaukee, uh, the Lord told me not to worry about things, just to put my trust in him. And so we put our trust in him and we're seeing uh, phenomenal things happen around us. Uh, being able to meet phenomenal people like you guys, Brent, I've known already, but he's phenomenal. And yeah. being able to see the lives change and, and these men and, you know, now getting calls asking if we're going to start a woman's home. Uh, soon to work with the women. And uh, so it's incredible what God's doing. And, you know, like I, I just got done coming out of a situation where I tell these people that, you know, if God is left out of the equation, it's not going to work. And that's the same here with God Touch Milwaukee. If I, if I start to choose and to do, uh, make decisions just on my own and, and say, this is how I'm going to do it, you know, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, but leave God out. It's going to fall apart like everything else falls apart. So that'll never happen. So, and uh, so I, I ask you guys who are watching, if uh, come look out, check out our website, come join us on the 17th and you, you, you will be able to meet some remarkable people. Homer, what a man uh, uh, who resonates great faith, obviously, and trust in the Lord and peace and joy. I mean, it's, it's, you can see it in his soul. Anything else from you, friend? This is exactly why I wanted to start and do my faith. So people get a chance to meet and hear people like Marty, Red Cross, RC, and that it exists. <laughs> this isn't made up. This is, this is real and right. you see it and you feel it. And it's, uh, it, it's just so good, not him. And, and uh, there are others like him. And there's a world out there that, that people just don't know. And I hope they have a chance to know now. I always say you put it so well, and I'm so thankful the Lord put it on your heart for this vision. Marty Calderon, we love you. You've become a dear friend. 
We look forward to the function and another session, I'm sure, because Homer's going to want you back on My Faith with Homer and Pip. It doesn't happen without Brent Young, our marvelous producer. If you have any ideas for a guest, want to come on yourself, tell us your faith story. Uh, I'm open to an email uh, with gratitude, pippinstom at yahoo.com, P-I-P-I-N-E-S, Tom at yahoo.com. For the Homer, for Brent Young, for the amazing Marty Calderon. So long, everybody. Thank you for viewing and listening, and God bless you.